If we cut him open now, he'll die. Only one thing can save Calm. What's that? A miracle. In the run-up to Christmas December 1986, King Kong Lives was released in cinemas, made as a direct sequel to the 1976 remake of King Kong from 1933. Its production costs were reportedly around $18 million, however this has been reported as low as $10 million, which was considerably less than the 1976 movie, whose budget was $24 million. King Kong 1976 was considered a success, despite being slammed by critics. It produced a worldwide box office of $90 million. However, King Kong Lives bombed massively, only taking a reported $4.7 million in the States. The movie was directed by Brit John Gilliman, who returned to directing duties after the 1976 remake. John had an impressive career, notably for releases like Death on the Nile and the 70s disaster movie Towering Inferno from 1974. He was responsible, however, for another box office disaster, with Sheena starring Beastmaster star Tanya Roberts in the title role in 1984. King Kong Lives, unfortunately, was Gilliman's last studio release due to the low box office results. It was panned by critics and was nominated for a Razzie Award for Poor Special Effects in 1987. The screenplay was co-written by Ronald Shusett and Stephen Pressfield, who later worked on the script for Free Jack in 1992 together which unfortunately also bombed. However, Ronald Shusett was responsible for the story treatments for successful movies like Ridley Scott's Alien and Total Recall. The movie was produced by the newly formed De Laurentiis Group, owned by the famed Italian producer Dino De Laurentiis. Dino was responsible for many now cult classics, such as 1980's Flash Gordon and David Lynch's Dune, and DEG produced many hits during its short run and produced movies like Raw Deal, Near Dark, and Michael Mann's Manhunter, as well as Bill and Ted's The Excellent Adventure. But DEG was defunct by 1989 due to a string of box office flops and was sold off, with the rights now being owned by Studio Canal. The plot of King Kong Lives is a very simple one. The movie picks up a decade after the events of the 1976 movie. Kong falls to his death off the Twin Towers in New York after a rooftop battle with helicopters. Watched by Jeff Bridges, Jack Prescott, and Kong's love interest played by a very young Jessica Lang. We slowly hear Kong's heart stop and he dies. Cut a decade later and it turns out Kong survived and he's been in a coma and requires a new heart. However, Dr. Amy Franklin has developed a new artificial heart, but unfortunately isn't able to perform the procedure as they are short on plasma and they need a miracle or Kong will die. Starring Linda Hamilton as Dr. Amy Franklin, Kong's heart surgeon, fresh from her role as Sarah Connor in James Cameron's The Terminator. She only took the role as she felt it may help boost her career. After this bomb, Linda went on to star in TV's Beauty and the Beast with Ron Perlman. Brian Kerwin plays Hank Mitch Mitchell, the adventurer who discovers Lady Kong. This role was originally offered to Peter Weller. He, however, wisely decided to make Robocop instead. Brian has starred in Jack with the late great Robin Williams and later in 27 Dresses. John Aston plays Colonel Nevitt, hellbent on destroying Kong. John will be familiar to most for his role in Beverly Hills Cop and also in Midnight Run. Whilst primate expert Peter Elliott takes on the role of Kong after effects legend Rick Baker donned the ape suit in the 1976 movie. Peter worked on Gorillas in the Mist and Congo, whilst Lady Kong is played by British actor George Antoni, who had roles in Interview with the Vampire and Elizabeth. John Scott provides a score for this movie. I actually think the score is one of the better aspects of the movie, with tender love themes and great action cues. John's career provided scores for movies like the low-budget Trog in 1970, so the Christopher Lambert movie, Greystoke, The Legend of Tarzan in 1984 and he also contributed to the score for the 2017 Kong Skull Island. King Kong 2 was a discovery made in the early 1990s on VHS, probably in blockbuster video. I must admit I'd never heard of it. I don't remember seeing anything about it in 1986. I had no idea it was released in the cinema back then, and I thought it was just a straight-to-video release. I remember kind of enjoying it at the time, and never gave it much thought after I'd watched it. It definitely became a curiosity to me. The 1976 was a very young childhood memory I had. I remember being scared by the TV spots that were shown during its release, and I had memories of being upset at the end of the movie. 
and I found watching the original version from 1933 very interesting as a kid. There were two computer games released in Japan, for the MSX and the Famicom systems, one focusing on Kong and the other on Mitch's adventures called King Kong 2, and the movie was also released as King Kong 2 on VHS and re-released on DVD as King Kong Lives. King Kong Lives from the start feels like a movie out of its time, it's got that 70 feel to it, like Gilliman's Tower in Inferno. It was a bold choice to release a sequel a decade after the original 1976 movie, and I'm sure the producers must have been aware how much the cinema had changed in the last decade, with Star Wars being released a year later, in 1977. This is what audiences had become accustomed to, which was very different to two grown men dressed in gorilla suits, standing on model cars and tanks, or eating baby alligators or oversized rubber ones, was a far cry from the world that was becoming the norm in cinema, and by 1986 cinema had become slightly more serious in its fantasy output. The ape suits are a far cry from the work of Rick Baker's superior effects in the original 1976 remake. Although Carlo Rombaldi is credited here and was nominated for the Razzie, I'm unsure how much work he did on this feature or whether they reused his creations from the 76 movie. The miniature and effects work is very inconsistent and works great in some places and very poorly in others, and the blue screen work is very rough and colour faded, although to be fair Kong is imagined better here than he was in the 1962 and 1967 Toho Kong movies, Godzilla vs King Kong and King Kong Escapes, but they are fun movies. Kong's representation in later movies hasn't always been better received. Peter Jackson's 2005 movie was definitely too long and overindulgent, whilst 2017's Kong Skull Island was all style over substance. It's going to be interesting to see what the planned King Kong vs Godzilla movie has to offer. The story of King Kong Lives makes little sense and Lady Kong is discovered far too early and too easily. However, I love the inferences from Jaws, as the locals go on a hunt to capture Kong. The movie's pretty violent too, with plenty of over the top deaths. Linda Hamilton is the best thing in the film, and yes it's bad, but it definitely falls into the bad it's good category. It's funny bad and action packed and at the same time sets itself up for a sequel too, as the movie again has an emotional ending. This is not the first Kong movie to induce the Son of Kong. The original 1933 movie released Son of Kong quickly in 1933, which was also fairly poor and Dino De Laurentiis had aspirations for a spin-off Son of Kong cartoon, which sounded pretty out there. All in all, King Kong Lives is a curiosity, a mad movie you have to watch to believe. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and thanks for watching, and please consider subscribing and you can follow my channel on the usual social media pages. Thanks a lot and I'll speak to you soon.